Welcome back everyone. Coming off a uh, dominant opening day performance by Spencer Turnbull. And some clutch base hits with men in scoring position by Eric Haas. We were able to edge the Tampa Bay Rays on opening day. So as we head into April, we'll see how the rest of the series goes and then set our scouting assignments. Looks like we won the second game of the series as well. Tight one in extra innings. Had a couple homers from Matt Vierling and Riley Green. Uh, bullpen did all right. Lang picked up his second save. Not a bad start for Reese Olsen. So let's go ahead and set our scouting assignments. We have no shortage of needs, I would say, across the board. So let's, with him being a pitching expert, let's just scout. Uh, we'll just do starting pitchers. We can pick up relievers in the you know, trade market or in free agency or even just turn failed starters into relievers. So let's go after starters and let's go, I suppose in the East. Let's send Andrew Palmer. Not really wowing me with any of his abilities. So let's see, maybe there's <laughs> this guy. What an incredible look. I gotta scout this guy if for no other reason than just for the memes. I mean, look, <laughs> look at Seth Vogel saying, wow, that is spectacular. All right, yeah, why not? And Rob Aquino is really good at discovering new prospects. So let's look at new prospects and let's go infield. I don't think we have any shortage of needs in the infield. We definitely need a third baseman. We probably need a shortstop. I mean, depending on how Javi Baez pans out, he might be here for a while regardless, but either way, we're gonna need to replace him long-term. Need a second baseman, potentially need a first baseman, depending on Torkelson's development. So let's stay in the West with the infield and let's do that. All right, so that should be good. I'm imagining sponsorships. We don't have a ton available, but we do have this. So this Cooperstown Bat Company Silver Sponsorship. I'm not totally sure what difference that makes, but might as well set it. And then let's finish out this road trip. So it looks like we head into our home opener three and three. We lost the finale to Tampa Bay. Pretty straightforward game. Decent performance by Scooble. And looks like we had 13 hits, so certainly had our opportunities. Beat up on the Astros in our first game. Wow, five homers. Five homers and seven innings from Eduardo Rodriguez will do the trick. And we got housed in this one. Miggy hit a homer, but Lorenzen got rocked pretty good, it seems, and so did Joey Wentz. Lorenzen getting rocked is not something that we saw a ton of in real life during his time on the Tigers. Joey Wentz getting rocked, on the other hand, is... All too believable, unfortunately. And then, looks like another starter. Yeah, Turnbull. For as well as he pitched against Tampa Bay on opening day, he pitched as poorly in Houston. No strikeouts, seven hits, six earned runs, and one and a third. So, two homers from Haas wasn't enough. Haas is off to a pretty good start, as is Riley Green. Akil Badu also hitting in the 400, so not bad overall. Our team-wide average is, is decent. Baez is struggling a bit. Torkelson not off to a great start, but I'll take it. All right, so heading into the home opener against the Red Sox. 
Looks like they're four and two, we're three and three. The Royals are off to a six and zero oh start. I'm sure everyone had that in their uh, preseason futures card. Royals to win 100 games. Let me look real quick and just see if the trade block has any movement on it. Got some guys with, I don't know, I suppose palatable salaries, but not necessarily any big talents. And we do see our friend Harold Ramirez there. I know I mentioned him earlier as being somebody that we might try and trade for. His potential isn't the most impressive, but I really like his contact abilities, the fact that he can play first base and the outfield. He also has decent speed. So I'm gonna take a look and see how baseballtradevalues.com grades him out. And we'll see if maybe we can put something together. Because I think he would certainly be of interest to us. We also have Cam Collier here, who is a 71 overall B potential, but he's only 18. So he would be hitting arbitration pretty early. But that's also intriguing with our need for an infielder. Doesn't field the greatest and isn't the fastest, so that kind of goes against the ethos that we're trying to build here. Similar kind of background on Christian Encarnacion where decent potential, decent overall young player. He's significantly older though than Collier. He's already 23. And Nick Lofton as well, 24. Can play infield and outfield. B potential. So we got some some leads to follow up on. So with that, let's get opening day, or I guess I should say, a lot of times people call it opening day around Detroit. I don't know if that's true for other areas too, even when it's not actually opening day, it's just the home opener. So I get in the habit of sometimes just saying opening day, but home opener for the Tigers. We got Reese Olsen on the bump. Uh, overcast day in Detroit, that checks out. Home openers, I've been to a couple in the past and they're usually about 48 degrees and steel gray skies. So Reese Olsen on the mound against Chris Sale. Um, let's see here. We can... We don't have any other righties on our bench. So I kind of want to leave things the way they are, but I do want to see if I can get creative here, at least with the designated hitter thing. So let me give Riley Green the day off just to kind of spare his legs a bit. And then Torkelson can play everywhere in the outfield. Um, not very well, I would imagine, because I haven't tried it before, but we can play him in right. Veerling can play center, I suppose. Not the greatest fielder, but at least he's fast. And then Haas is already in left, so we'll do that. And I guess we'll just see what happens. So a reminder about how I'm going to approach the gameplay. My plan for the regular season, and then we'll adjust if the postseason ever enters into the fray. But my plan for the regular season is to play essentially every five games. So every starter's turn in the rotation, I'll play sequentially. So I played Spencer Turnbull, he's our number one. I'll play Reese Olsen, he's our number two. Then I'll play, um, I think Scooble is our number three and so on. But I'm only gonna play three innings every time and I'll rotate the three innings I played. So on opening day, I played the first three innings. So in this game, what I'll do is I'll play innings four, five, six, and then next time I'll play seven, eight, nine, plus any extra innings if it comes to that. So let's simulate the first couple innings here and then we'll dive into the action. Looks like we took a one nothing lead. 
see, we got a hit from Rodgers and a hit from Haas, so probably another RBI from Haas. It's been on a tear in the early going. Olsen has gotten through three innings. Energy looks like it's in a good spot. He's only given up one hit, so let's take over. Pitch count's at 42 as we start the fourth, so Olsen's been pitching great. I'll take that any day of the week. Looks like his primary pitch is a slurve, which is not something you see very often, especially for a starter. Having a bit of trouble locating in the early going, but could pump a fastball in there. I'm going to try the sinker here. Don't want to groove one. Looks like we did, but at least it had some movement to it. And actually, that wasn't really groove. That was pretty good location. Try the fastball again. Even when Turner's hitting 100, he's still pretty scary. His history of power precedes him. Speaking of scary, Devers is another one. Lost a lot of battles against him in the virtual world. But we win this one. So 3-2 count here on Duval. I'm going to go with the high fastball. All over it, but foul. Let me try a splitter. Ooh, missed outside. Splitter, slurve, and sinker is a heck of a combo. My man. Love the downward breaking pitches, particularly sinkers. I feel like I hang sinkers so much less than I hang even like a changeup. Let's see how Torkelson handles this play. Not an easy one, but he makes it. And he's leading us off in the bottom of the fourth. Sale is also in a really good spot with his pitch count. That arm angle is a tough one. Speaking of tough ones. See, it looks like Rogers doubled and then came around to score. I don't know what I was swinging at with that Torkelson at bat. Ooh, we smoked that one, but man, yeah, much ado about nothing. They've kind of massaged Triple's alley out of Comerica a bit by moving in the fences. It's still cavernous if you hit the ball to right center, for sure. But it's interesting to see these fences, which were moved in once, what they're looking like now. Oof. That's a great pitch. It looked like a hanger. And then I think it ended up maybe even out of the zone. So, got to tip your cap to sail there. He's a tough guy to hit against. I don't care how badly he struggles in real life. Never felt comfortable hitting against him. Good combo there from Olsen to get Christian Arroyo to strike out. See if we can get another one here against Enrique Hernandez. In real life, Hernandez was right around the trade deadline, traded back to the Dodgers where he spent many years. Got him to chase there. Not as fortunate with Mondesi. So let's hope that the two out walk doesn't come back to bite us. Mondesi is a huge threat to steal. 98 stolen base rating and pretty good speed to go with that. It's funny, I think I went on a mini tangent in the setup episode talking about how Cabrera should never play in the field and blah 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 and now he's played first base both games that I've played so much for that alright one two count let's see if we can just strike him out and be done with this 
Got him to chase, but... Didn't end in any kind of uh, positive result and then threw a fastball down the middle and that one did. One seal Perez, who I've gotten to play with in both of our games because we faced a lefty both times. He's 0 for 1. base here I'd be happy just working sales pitch count up a bit I'll take that sharp single to center Olsen's been pitching great and should be in fine shape pitch count wise but I'm gonna get the bullpen going just for the sake of preparedness Ooh, good pitch to hit there. Out in front. That slur was only 77 with a fastball at maybe 96. It's a heck of a combo. He plunked Cabrera. Almost threw it behind him, actually. I'm really not a big bunt guy, but I'm considering it here. <laughs> Chase a 2-1 pitch in the dirt. That's unfortunate. Well, I guess the bunt decision has been made. Three, two. I'm not going to start the runners with Cabrera on the move. Sure enough, the Scoreboard at Comerica says it's 45 out. So, the show definitely got that right. Timing wasn't too bad on that fastball, but just missed it. Such is life, especially with some lower rated players. Let's see if we can get Veerling going here. He's really struggled against lefties. And it looks like that's going to be a fielder's choice. Yeah, Cabrera's out at second, Veerling easily in there at first, so. The inning falls on the shoulders of Riley Green. Circle change almost looks like a sinker, and he does have a sinker, so maybe that's part of it too, but it's pretty fast. I mean, it's almost 90 miles an hour, and it's definitely got the same kind of bite as sinker. Man, that's a tough pitch to hit. All right, we squander an opportunity here. Let's hope it doesn't come back to bite us. So here we go, top six. Olsen at 87 pitches. Check the stamina, but I think it's in a pretty good place. Yeah, not bad. Just under half full, honestly. It's meant for that to be a fastball. Still not used to the slurve as a primary pitch. And comes back to bite me. Alright, Verdugo shouldn't be much of a threat to steal. Big out there. First pitch we get turned to pop up. Here's Devers again. Maggie, come on. Oh, good diving stop, though. I think we'll get an out. We do. Nice play, Cabrera. So it couldn't turn two, obviously, but... Glad we got something out of it. Could have been a third and first situation. All right, I'm going to go with the sinker to do ball inside to start. Now I 
think I'm gonna try and go slurve out of the zone. Stayed a little more over the plate than I wanted, but still not a bad pitch. Let's try fastball up. Got him. Corey Kluber from one veteran to another. Bias starts things off with a single. Never want to throw a breaking pitch in the zone to Javi Baez. I mean, quite frankly, he's been known to swing at pitches three feet outside of the zone, so not much use in throwing one in the zone. I might try to steal here. Let's see. I'm going to try and get a lead. All right, he's keen to it. With a 2-1 count, though, I think they're going to be reticent to try a pitch out. They might. We can't rule that out, but... Let's see. Oh, I'm picked off. Yeah, there you go. That's what you get, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out... I haven't played this game with too many guys who have a really high steal rating. But I'm trying to figure out what the threshold is for not getting picked off. Another bad at bat by me with Torkelson just swinging at junk. Because Baez is in the 60s, and looks like he did alright at not getting picked off for a minute, and then the dam broke, so. So no runs scored in our three innings. Either for or against. And Olsen's pitch count is still in good shape, energy is still good, so. We got the bullpen ready, but let's see if Olsen can keep it going and gets through another inning. No insurance runs coming from us. Let's try and... Let's see. Maybe we go batter by batter. Energy's getting a touch low. So I think I might go to the pen here. Maybe bring in... Lang's energy is in a pretty good spot, so I'm kind of tempted to try a five-out save. But let's see. Jaron Duran is up. He's a lefty. But with the three batter minimum, not sure I want to bring in a lefty, especially because we don't have any really you know, top-end guys. Like Tyler Holton's been great in real life, as has Foley, but their ratings don't reflect that as much. So, uh, maybe I try and see if I can get through the inning with Olsen. Let's try it. All right, we get another out. There we go. Success. So, we'll bring Lang in for the top of the ninth. We do add an insurance run, which is nice. His energy, honestly, is still in a pretty good spot, but I'd rather just bring in Lang. Don't want to unnecessarily risk injury if we don't have to. Pop up, single, strike out, fly out. Good win. We'll take it. 2 nothing in the home opener. A winning record through seven games. Torkelson played right field. <laughs> We take those. Absolutely. And Lang has been lights out so far. Three for three, and I think all have been pretty stress free, pretty straightforward. What a performance by Reese Olson. Off to a great start this year. Eight innings, seven strikeouts, ERA, and just a touch under two. Beautiful. So, let's keep the simulation going. Looks like Ty Madden is going to be out for a couple days in AAA. He's one of our better young pitchers, B potential. So that's fine. We can keep him active. No big deal there. 
Andrew Navigato, Taurus Calf. He'll be out one, two months. It's always tricky in these situations because if it's two months, then we can just put him on the 60 day DL and forget about it. But if it ends up being one month, and I guess I should say injured list, it's not, not DL. Um, we put him on the 60 day injured list and he's out for only a month, then we just kind of waste time with him being stuck there for another month. So I guess I'll put him on the 10 day and then we'll just have to adjust that. Uh, so we can stop simulating here. We can check out our second win in as many games against the Red Sox. Another low scoring affair, another good pitching performance. Bullpen took care of things. Hey, I'll take it. We've shown a proclivity for winning low scoring games in the early going here. I mean, I guess we beat Tampa 6-5 and Houston 10-4, so not all of them have been pitcher's duels, but 3-1 and then 2-0, 2-1. So let's check out our scouting situation. Uh, it's down here. <laughs> Seth Vogel saying, man, that guy. That is, that is a really special look. I'll tell you what. All right, cool. So looks like Bud Key scouted 20 starting pitchers. So take a look at the prospects. Got some potential, high potential guys. And Chris Varis, potential not only in the 90s, potentially, but also could be a high overall guy right from the jump, too. So that certainly stands out. Same with Les Gann. So I'll probably just. Have him stick here. Uh, let's see. And maybe we move him a little bit down the priority list, though. Just because we don't really need starting pitchers that desperately. Uh, we can keep Palmer with Vogel saying and just kind of finish out the interest there. I mean, he is supposed to go number one overall, so we probably wouldn't have a chance to draft him anyways. But we can leave him number one for this week and just kind of let that play out. And then let's see, prospect list here for infielders. Looks like we got some right feelers in the mix too, so that's fine. Uh, let's see, short stops. And 99 potential. Obviously a wide range there, but with him being a late second round, maybe early third round guy, that's something to think about for sure. these guys. I don't have a ton of experience with the scouting and draft in this game, so I'm kind of going through it blind a bit here, which I think is, is part of the realism, part of the fun in the rebuild, honestly. Not having a total science, you know, where everything is just, oh yeah, I'll do this and then it'll obviously work and we'll get the next Mike Trout. So we can roll with that. We can keep things the same and just rearrange the priorities for the week and see what happens. Looks like we still got this sponsorship enabled, so that's all good. Uh, take a look at the trade block again. Looks about the same. Still have Harold Ramirez there. Uh, Division-wise, the Royals quote-unquote cooled off by losing one game, so now they're 8-1, and one. Guardians 7-2. and two. 
So the AL Central, which I think most people would have said is easily the weakest division in baseball and might have a winner who's under 500, off to a pretty good start. Padres coming out of the gates flying. Angels looking good. Mariners really struggling. And Blue Jays have hit the skids. So, all right. Let's simulate until Scoobles start against the Giants. And here, it looks like we need to fix the eerie situation. We've gotten drubbed the past couple of days. Eduardo Rodriguez seems to struggle in real life against his former team, too. He just got lit up like a Christmas tree the other day. And true to form. Can't imagine he pitched well in a game that we lost 10 to 2. Yeah, five earned runs in four innings, and then got smoked by the Blue Jays. The thing is, I mean, even when we play the Red Sox, but certainly when we play the Blue Jays, even if we have a better record or the same record, they have so much more talent than we do that it's hard to expect to win games like that just because. Let's see, what do we need? Second baseman. Just because when they're that much more talented than you, especially in a simulation, there's not a lot of uh, places to hide, not a lot of ways you can paper over that. Looks like the Mud Hens are off to a good start, so that's cool to see. Let's keep these games going. Yeah, we scored one run in three games against the Blue Jays. So that'll happen. Pitching wasn't bad the last couple. But all right, four game losing streak as the Giants come to town, rematch of the 2012 World Series. I do not want to play the Mud Hens game. So, there we go. Yeah, we can go with the normal uniforms, that's cool. And energy looks pretty good. So we can maybe get, let's get Carrie Carpenter some run and maybe give, Carpenter does not field well, but it's not that bad. Let's give Veerling the day off. Actually he has the same fielding rating as Veerling does. I don't know how accurate that is relative to real life, but we'll take it. So we'll give Cabrera the day off. We'll let Veerling DH and, and rest a bit. And then we'll get Carpenter in the lineup. And we'll see what happens. Get another lefty bat in against a righty. See if Carpenter's played yet this year. He hasn't. So we'll try it. I think we should work Zach McKinstry in the lineup. Actually, let's do that. That's that's fine. No problem. Andy Ibanez has been okay, but he's a righty. So let's get McKinstry in. McKinstry can play second. McKinstry also, I don't think, has played yet this year. Yeah, he hasn't. Why not? What the heck? We don't have much to lose. It's not like we're taking... Uh, Prime Alex Rodriguez or Derek Jeter out of the lineup when we make these decisions, so why not? Looks like a beautiful April evening in downtown Detroit. So let's see what happens. We'll sim all the way to the seventh. Looks like we got an early lead. Baez and Torkelson came through, so that's good to see. Both of those guys have been struggling a bit in the early going. Ooh, big second inning. Let's see if, uh, yeah, Carpenter and McKinstry both got a hit. Cool. Good for those guys. That's cool. Scooble seems to be pitching decently in the early going here. Got a 7 nothing lead. Torkelson's 3 for 3. Wow. All right, Giants get two back. No problem. And we take over in the top of the ninth with a 9-2 lead. So 
for as much as the bats have struggled this week, it seems like they've come alive here. First batter we face with Scoobles, Luis Matos. He threatened to put one in the triples alley, but Carpenter was able to cut it off in time. So Scoobles' energy seemed like it was in a pretty good place, but let's just get the pen going for the sake of having him ready. It's something that generally I like to do just because otherwise I might forget. And then if he runs into trouble in a hurry or he gets hurt or whatever the case might be, I don't want to have nobody ready. So a nice Mr. Snappy from Scoobal there. Curveball gets Crawford just swinging this. Wilmer Flores, let's see if we can retire him with the high fastball. We can, not via the strikeout, but a pop-out. Works just the same. And Austin Slater, their leadoff hitter, is one for three today. Trying to keep them alive in the seventh. Alright, I'll try a cutter here. Maybe you can keep it in the zone. Ooh, Texas leaguer. Blooper down the right field line. He's going two. I think I would have had him at second had I had any urgency with my throw, but I kind of just lackadaisically went to the cutoff man. So now I got two men in scoring position. I'm going to let Scooble try to get through the inning at least. It looks like we will. First pitch fly out to left. Keel Badu takes that one in. Let's go hit. Kerry Carpenter, two for three. Two runs scored. Actually, while I'm here, let me warm up some different guys with the lead that we have. Don't see any use in expending some of our better arms. And, I mean, Will Vest has been good so far this year. I don't know that Shreve has pitched. He has. One clean inning. So we can let those guys get loose, and if we need to, we can turn to them. Big cut on 3-1. Way too eager. Sat back on that one a little more. But not enough. Keaton Wynn is the pitcher for the Giants. We'll say the true sim rosters, they have McKinstry's stance down to a T. And all we needed was one pitch to work a walk there. McKinstry's a pretty good stealer, so let me try this threshold again. I know this would be frowned upon by many because you're not supposed to steal with a certain lead or whatever. It's just the computer. I don't really care. I don't think they'll get too offended. Runner! So a swing and miss from Veerling, but McKinstry gets a steal. So I like to see that, that steal rating. That's nice. It's probably the best one on the team. And I think especially when you do have stealing ability in the 80s, or 90s. Speed of 66 isn't too much of an issue. Perfect, perfect from Riley Green. And it gets it over the left fielder's head, so we got a two out double there. 105 off the bat from our franchise center fielder. That'll work, that'll do. Good splitter too, but was able to time it up well. Bias had a pretty good game, two for four. I know we saw Torkelson was three for three earlier, so that's also really good to see. I think we've hit the ball decently in the innings that we've played so far this year, but we have yet to hit a homer. So 
maybe Baez or Torkelson will deliver one of those. No homer, but it looks like we got one up the gap. And yeah, Baez is going to get a triple out of this, I think. So 11-2 Tigers. First triple on the year for Javi. Third hit of the day. Now let's see if we can get Torkelson's fourth hit. I haven't been doing him much justice lately. I've had some terrible at-bats where I've been swinging it. Pitch is way inside or way outside, so... Let's see if we can stay in the zone here. Fourteen hits on the night for the Tigers. Oof. It was way out in front of a slur. It was a good pitch to hit, too, but we'll take it. Walk, double, triple gets us another run. Actually, another pair of runs. So 11 to 2, heading to the 8th. I'll keep Scooble in. If he gets in trouble, starts to labor at all, we can take him out. The bat helicopters out towards first from Pyro Estrada. I imagine the game doesn't count for as we get a quick strike out of Hanager there. I imagine the game doesn't count for the bat in terms of like players having to move out of the way of it or it impacting their ability to field the ball. It'd be interesting to see what would happen if the bat ever did go far enough to make that happen. Not a really good problem to have, but interesting nevertheless. Quick inning for Scooble. So, hopefully this is the last time we bat in this game. Because if it's not, then something has gone horribly wrong. Looks like Nick Maton is hitting, I'm sure it's a small sample size, but still hitting 500 against lefties. I don't think he's played a ton, because he's one of those guys that we platoon out with uh, Wenseal Perez when we do face lefties. But good hit for Maton there. And Maton, a promising younger player, he had a couple of decent years with the Phillies that has mightily struggled in Detroit in real life this year. He got sent down to AAA and he's back up now, but I think he's hitting like 180 and he's played the lion's share of the games between third base and then occasionally in the outfield. So hopefully he can get going. Haas strikes out. Seems like Haas has had no trouble getting going in the virtual world this year. We always hit maybe three homers in the early going. And we are just teeing off today. I'm going to go three. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go three, and then I'm going to try and take the extra base with Badu. Well, that didn't work out. Whoever's in right field has a cannon. So, so much for that. But I guess 11-2 game, you can afford to maybe be a little more aggressive, a little riskier. Missed a good pitch to hit there with Carpenter. Yeah, chase a slurve down low. All right, we head to the top of the ninth. Scoople's energy is still in a good place, but I don't really see a reason to unnecessarily stretch him out and put him at risk. I think in a real scenario he would long since have been removed from the game. He's had a lot of injury issues and arm problems. And Will Vest looks pretty good here in the early going. I do think though that Scooble's durability rating does not necessarily reflect how injury prone he's been. So may not be something that we have to worry ourselves too much about over the course of this dynasty, this franchise. But either way, glad we could get Will Vest in. Looks like he's going to have a quick 1-2-3. A nice team win after a frustrating week. And the four-game skid and... Start another home series off right. So good stuff. 11 runs, I think 
15 hits, 16 hits. Let's see. One through four all had multiple hits. Everyone in the lineup got a hit. Not something you see very often with any team. So that's cool. Also worked six walks. Meanwhile, didn't walk any Giants and struck out 13. A lot of stuff to love there. I'm going to pause here. We'll pick up our next episode with more scouting and might even work in a trade. Thanks for watching, as always, and we'll see you again soon.